How are we going, everyone? We come out with a beautiful day like today in autumn, peaceful, calm, and collective. I'm here with my little apple trees. This is our Granny Smith. It gives us about a thousand apples every year. Um, it just gets loaded. Uh, I'm bringing it down to high. This is our autumn prune. It hasn't dropped all its leaves yet, so I don't want it to grow so hard again in spring. But let's just have a quick look at it. See the weeping effect it has around this area here, the whole, outs the whole outside area? And then right through the guts in the middle, we've got this straight upright growth, and it's gone probably two metres in height, three metres almost, well, two and a half metres, I reckon. I'm going to bring that right back down now. And every time you cut it down, it multiplies. And what I mean by that is every time you cut a branch down, for example here, have a look at there. Once upon a time it was growing from here straight up. That's now been cut off. And now we've got some, look at these little buds there. We've got a couple of buds there. That's going to bear some fruit for us. And on this side is where the new sucker come up. So that's grown from there. Well, it's not a sucker, a new shoot. Suckers come from the base of the plants. That's taken off. Now, if I leave all this, it'll just keep growing tall. If I take the top off, for example, and I like to cut down to a couple of buds from the base like that there. If you can see what I've just done, see that cut? There's a couple of buds in there, more than two. That's plenty for new growth if I wanted to establish there. Or hopefully they actually put on some buds or fruit. Now like the backside of a spider is what you want to look for and the, the more plump it is, the more likely it's going to give you some beautiful fruit. Things like this, double buds and things like that. And furry ones here, look at that there. See, once they start to thicken up and get nice and furry, that's where your fruit's coming from, your fruit bearers. So that can happen down here. Now, by cutting it back down like that, you're forcing the plant, and there's different undercuts and overcuts you can do. But if you're cutting it back down to a couple of buds, chances are you may get a fruit off this, maybe not straight away the first year, second year, and so on. For example here, here's another one. This will definitely give us some fruit coming springtime. So that there will be constantly every year bearing fruit for us, providing we don't damage all those buds there. So when we take the fruit off, we take it off when it's ripe. Now I'm going to cut this all right back down now today folks. It's still got a lot of leaf on it. All I'm aiming to do now is bring down the height. You can see each year I've been doing that over here. If you can see all this, see that there? Look at that. That's a couple of years, if not three years worth of cutting. Let me just finish cutting the tops off this to show you what I mean what it's going to look like. It starts to become a cluster there, which is not what you want to have long term. You want to thin it out and pick, sorry, I just lock that into place as I cut it. You want to thin it out so that you don't have, you know, 10 fruit growing in one little corner there. See that there? That's quite messy. You don't want that to be like that. This has to all get thinned out properly to a couple of strong buds and you need to look for the ones that are actually going to bear some fruit. In this case here, I don't see any yet. We may get something off here. See, that's, that's a complete there. There's another one on this side here. There's a chance we'll get something there. All this can eventually become fruit bearing spurs. Do we want to keep all that on top? I reckon not. There's not enough space in this for all this to grow. So I'm going to bring that right down. If I can get in here, let me try and get my hands around here because it's quite Awkward, let me sneak through, excuse me. So we're gonna get in here and cut that. Oh, there's a, see there's one there, there. Can you see that? I'm not sure if this branch is in the way. There's something there that may actually bear some fruit for us next year. Maybe not quite ready yet, but we'll cut it to that like that. We've got one there. This may go and this may go. For now, all I wanna do is bring the height down. What I just showed you there, we're gonna do later in winter time when all the leaves have fallen off and we can see through the middle of the plant. One thing you shouldn't be doing is going around your trees, whether it's nectarine, peach, apple, pear, is going around and saying, okay, this is a nice branch here, but look at all these little shoots, side shoots. You know, you're going to say, ah, oh, I don't need all that, so you start cutting them all off. Well, that's the biggest mistake you can make because all these little spurs here, all these are where your fruit will come from. Fruit will come from here. There was fruit here last time. Fruit will come from here. See all these there? They will actually produce something for us. Maybe not all of them, but some of them will. So if you start cutting off these little ones and just leave a main shoot, and I've seen some of you do that. You sent me photos of it. You've got a nectarine that's got five branches and all these little side laterals have been taken off, all these little shoots. They've, and if there were a couple of buds on them, they're going to be a fruit for you next year. So don't remove all those. Remove the main structural um, branches if you need to. Bring the height down, and that's what I've got to do here. All that's got to come down to my arm's reach. 
right? I can go around now and just do this, not worry too much. I'm gonna probably lose a few buds here and there, folks. Or I could turn around and say, well, you know what? I don't wanna do all that, have all these multiple shoots there. I'm just gonna take it off and I'm gonna sacrifice this like that there. See that? I've just taken it off and that's a lot neater. That's a lot better. For example here, and every prune is different. You can't say, well, he did it that way. I can do it to everything. You've got to look at the integrity of this branching. Look at that. We've got a shoot coming off here. We can cut that off there. Take that off there if we like like that. This is way too long. We don't need that. We can actually cut it lower if we want. That's not going to hurt it. That looks like it's going to start bearing from that point there. See how it's uh, complete there on the end? This one here is going to keep growing. See this branch here? We don't need that to go. We can take it back down to a couple of these if we want. Just cut it to there. That's fine. It's had one cut before there. So now we've cut it again and hopefully we'll force these buds to become fruit bearers. Cut all that off. You can do that if you've got the room. If you haven't got the room, then just go in there and take the height right down as I need to do here. Take it off. And see this secateur that I'm using? This has to be one of the best secateurs, folks. Lowe's or Lowe's. This is the number five, I think. This is the anvil pruner. Now, I've discussed this before, but I'm going to do it again. See how the top blade looks like it's a lot longer? or well, really out of shape. It's not central. If I hold it that way, see the angle of that? See how it's sticking up? But when I close it, well, I'll close this one here because that controls it. Look at how it slides down. It comes and lines up perfectly. So what it's doing in actual fact is as you're cutting, it's slicing at the same time. And that's the secret to removing all that tension and pressure that you need to apply with your hand. This is a small one, yet it can fit a decent sized branch in there. So my fingers, what, I don't know, about two centimeters, almost, you know, 15 to 20 centimeters, uh, two centimeters, 15 to 20 millimeters in diameter folks so that's what it'll fit in there and they're quite comfortable and if the tree has got a little bit of sap flow even if it's hardwood or old wood this cuts a lot easier than your typical uh, bypass secateurs anvil cutters or loppers you can get them in a couple of sizes these are the number fives for the small hand and then my hand's not small it's not the hugest of hands but it's still a decent size grip on it there you go and that's what I'm using at the moment here. So you can go the next size up, but ladies, you're gonna love these. If you haven't got yourself a pair of anvil cutters, get the Lowe's number five, they're the best. And I think they're on special on our website as well. So I'm gonna cut all these right down. Three, two, one. There we are. Now, I am using the Lowe's number five, folks. They're an amazing and amazing uh, pruner, right? But really, at the end of the day, they're not gonna get through that. <laughs> so. They will cut branches like this, like butter. And look, and th th these will cut bigger, bigger diameters. I mean, really, at the end of the day, like that. See there? I'll get it into that area there. And it just, you've got to do a bit of a turn. And there you are, nice clean cut. And that's ideal for sort of hardwood. These will take probably a, th a third of the effort you need to take with a typical bypass secateur. Now, what I've done here is I've just taken the main branch out, this is useless to me. You can see how many times we've cut it back all around here. Look at it, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, that's just now. Nevertheless, this is two or three years of cutting back to that same spot. I can work with it and try and force it to produce fruit, but I don't need it there. So out it comes, that's gone. We're opening it up. We've got a couple of branches here as well. We don't really need these. I've got too many going on. Now what I'm talking about is thinning out the clusters. When you've got, I mean, this, this tree needs to be thinned out seriously. I've got too much going on here, look at all that. All that is beautiful because all that will produce fruit, but we don't need so much of it in the one spot. Yet, I mean, a lot of people will say to you, too many fruit on one tree will give you smaller fruit. Still probably tasty and all that if you give all, all the right nutrients, but you want larger fruit. If you want larger fruit, thin it out really hard and you don't want any crossing over dead disease damage or bruising. Now here's what an example is of bruising. Look at that there. See that there? Or damaged wood. That's rubbing. I won't say bruising, that's actually rubbing. So when it sits on, and I'm going to let it go here, and it sits into place here, you can see how it's rubbing there. See all that, that branching there gets in stuck in there. Sometimes it goes there. So the little buds are rubbing against each other. When they do that, you're, you're opening up wounds on the, on the tree and it's you know, susceptible to viruses and diseases getting in there. So thin them out and things like this as well. You can't see it from there. Have a look at that. Look at all this stuff here. So old branch, another old branch, and it suckers up from in the middle there. All that's useless. We'll keep the one, get rid of the middle part. Let me just quickly do that now. 
nice and easy. And we're going to come back in winter and clean this up again once all the leaves have fallen. We can see exactly what's going on. So we thin that out like that. We've got a branch that's gone all the way down there. Look at that. It's coming down here and then pushing all the way through there. We can't afford to get rid of this. We can leave the buds here, just there. See where my thumb is? We can leave the buds there and maybe this little branch here and take the rest of it off like this. And that way we create a more balanced open environment. Not now. If you've got the time to do it and you can see through it, there's no harm in doing it now. But all you need to do for now is really bring the height down. I've got a couple of more branches to cut over there. And once we've done that, we just wait for winter to kick in properly. The leaves fall over. Let me get out. So folks, get out there and prune your trees. You prune now, you reduce the amount of growth you get in springtime. And if you're looking for growth, wait till winter to prune. Don't do this pruning now. Do it in winter. And that way the tree reacts almost instantaneously in springtime, which is only around the corner, to get more growth. So you can create a better structure. But if you're trying to create a more productive plant that's going to give you more fruit, you know, not as much growth on top, then prune now like I just did now, I'm going to take those off. And then in winter when the rest of the leaves fall off, go back in there and clean up all the overlap and branches, uh, all overlapping branches that are rubbing and, and damaging each other. And then thin out some of them because you don't need so many clusters. For more information go to our website vasilisgarden.com. Uh, these are online folks, I'm sure we'll have them on special today. Uh, there's only a handful of them left so check it out, get your pair ordered before the prices go back up. And our superfood, I did mention it yesterday to the team and they put an announcement yesterday that our superfood prices as of the 1st of June are going up in price. We have had them on a special uh, next to low price clean skin bags and things like that but because the labelling's coming in the trials are officially going to be over their prices are going to jump up so you're not going to get those really discounted prices you're seeing currently if you want to stock up take advantage of it now order online or phone call 1300 627 374 to put your bulk orders in because that's the only way you can get a bulk order put your orders in there and then organise a pickup or delivery as you wish Vasilisgarden.com from Eva Silly and Maresi so much to say so little time to say it in.